Steph was telling us there could be a deal between Marks and Spencer and Ocado, and it has happened. happened. Yeah, it has happened. So M&S will soon be delivering food to your door via a car door. Right. Um, what they've done is they've taken a 50% stake in a car door. So this means two things. First of all, it gives a car door money to be able to invest in the business, to improve their technology and make their business slicker. But it also allows M&S to catch up with its rivals. So it had been behind the times with online food delivery because they were really struggling to work out how to make money from the small amounts of food people tend to buy in M&S so more often than not people won't buy their big shop in M&S they'll mm. buy their top-up things so the the average basket spend as, it, as it's referred to in the industry is around 13 pounds obviously a car door's minimum delivery at the minute is 40 pounds so they were trying to work out how to make that actually happen for them so by tying up with a car door it now gives them the already big and experienced customer database of a car door shoppers so they're hoping it will then mean more people will buy their weekly shop from M&S. And, yeah, the and the question, obviously, anyone who shops will be thinking, when? I mean, when, well, when yeah, it's going to take delivery? a bit of time to sort the logistics out with all of this. So they're saying <clears throat> the latest will be September 2020 when this will happen. And obviously, Ocado at the minute works with Waitrose, so that um, agreement has got to end as well. So Waitrose have put out a statement this morning saying by September 2020 it will end with them and people who shop with Waitrose will be able to buy online, not through Ocado, but through their right. own website. So there's, there's still, uh, it's not going to be like this morning you go online and you get your M&S delivery from Ocado. It's going to take a bit of time. But really interesting for the grocery sector, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to shake things up a bit now because M&S has been doing really well with food and this then and just takes it to that bigger customer base. Could take it to another level. 47. So Steph's going to tell us about a new collaboration between the BBC and ITV and a new name for us all, Steph. BritBox. Have yes. I got that right? Yes, you have. This is a new streaming service. It's certainly been a morning of new partnerships because mm -hmm. earlier, morning, everyone, I was talking about the tie-up between M&S and Ocado for food delivery. And also, uh, in the last half hour, it's been announced that ITV and the BBC are joining forces to bring out a new streaming service, which they hope will rival Netflix, which, as Charlie just said, is called BritBox. Now with us is Tom Harrington, who's a senior researcher in Enders Analysis. Does keeps an eye on everything that's going on in the media world uh, with companies like the BBC and ITV. Tell us what you know about this streaming service. Well, very little. In the press release, which just went out, uh, they've announced uh, that they're at the, in the finishing stages of a strategic uh, relationship alliance with the BBC on uh, BritBox. BritBox launched about two years, two and a half years ago in uh, the US which was an alliance, it is an alliance between uh, BBC Worldwide, AMC and ITV. Uh, we don't know when it's going to start. We don't really know how much it's going to cost or what's going to be on it. Uh, we'd imagine cost-wise it'd probably be about five ninety nine. anything more. People start comparing it to Netflix and it's not going to be any, anything like Netflix in terms of scale or size. So how is it going to be different from what people already get on their ITV, uh, sorry, their BBC iPlayer or their ITV hub? Well, that's a very, very good question. And I think that is probably the major struggle that they're going to have. People uh, at the moment expect to get sort of this content for free or as part of their licence fee, that being the back catalogue of the BBC and ITV. Um, and the expenditure uh, that this service is going to have isn't really large enough to sort of create a whole lot of uh, original programming. Yeah, because Netflix spend a fortune, don't they, on, mm -hmm. their, on their content, something like £8 billion pounds is what we're talking with Netflix. Yeah, so in the press release, uh, ITV said they're going to spend £25 million this year and BritBox £40 million next year, and then I think a declining amount in years going forward. To put that in perspective, as you said, £8 billion on content by Netflix, a billion in marketing, uh, a, a billion in tech, that's why it runs so smoothly and you know, never buffers. Uh, 25 million, that's, that's about three episodes of The Crown. Wow, it's staggering when you think of it like that. But there must be a reason why they're doing this. They must have done lots of research to work out that this is what UK audiences want. Well, television viewing figures are you know, in decline, as you, might, uh, as you might imagine. And a lot of that has to do with the services like uh, Netflix and uh, Amazon. And the BBC, ITV aren't really in that space at the moment. They sort of have to be to try and stem, uh, stem that flow. Uh, they've tried in the past. Back in 2009, there was a thing called Kangaroo, which was, a, which was ready to go. It was, between, uh, it was an arrangement between BBC, ITV and Channel 4. But the competition commission at the last moment, uh, this is before uh, Netflix, by the way, uh, ruled it out on competition concerns. And ever since, I haven't really been able to get in the game. Um, it does seem a little bit late, but uh, it's something everyone's uh, been questioning, you know. 
mm. ITV, BBC have to be in this space. Uh, and interesting, you mentioned there about how uh, they've been, this has been happening in America already. People in America can get this Brit box. How has it done there? Has it done well? It's done uh, uh, um, surprisingly well. They're up to about half a million subscribers which I imagine many of them are expats who want to have access to British content, and they do have some original stuff on there. But to put it into perspective, I think Netflix have about 63 million subscribers, so it is a very niche player. And it's a completely different sort of um, offering when you think about it. Uh, you know, this is uh, quite different programming as to what is on TV. I'm talking about the US here. But over here, you know, old Inspector Morse episodes, Midsummer Murders, Endeavour, Excellent programs, mm. but these are things that people sort of expect to get for free or as part of their license fee. Yeah, obviously the bosses are dead excited about this. The boss of the BBC has put out a statement, so have ITV. But you seem to be giving it a bit of a downer. Do you not think it's going to work? It's just very small. The people who will be attracted to it uh, maybe already have Netflix already. Maybe they already have uh, Amazon. If you have uh, SVOD service, you probably have uh, SVOD households here have about 1.4 services each. And that's usually Netflix, Amazon as well. And people usually get Amazon because of the shipping and they don't really use it for the video. And the, uh, the scenario is that, you know, most people seem to have a service which they don't use already, so why would they have yeah. a third? Interesting. Tom, thank you very much. I appreciate that, that breaking news this morning about that uh, new partnership called BritBox.